Pleasanton, California, May 22, 1957. The General Electric Company dedicates a new research center devoted entirely to the peacetime applications of atomic energy. More than 400 guests assemble for the ceremonies and are welcomed by George White, general manager of the company's atomic power equipment department, of which the new facility is a part. Dr. Ernest O. Lawrence, director of the University of California's Radiation Laboratory, opens the program and is followed by Dr. Ralph D. Bennett, manager of the new facility called the Valacitos Atomic Laboratory. And Francis K. McCune, vice president and general manager of the General Electric Company's Atomic Products Division. Featured speaker at the ceremonies is the Honorable Carl T. Durham, representative of the state of North Carolina and chairman of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. It has occurred to me that after we tried to take care of our immediate acceleration problems in Congress this year, perhaps the Joint Committee should sponsor the development of a 10-year demonstration power reactor program with private enterprise. This program might begin to take over where the five-year experiment reactor program leaves off. It should provide a long-term assurance to private atomic equipment companies and private and public power organizations of a stable and steady amount of government financial support and assistance for atomic power development during this crucial development period for private industry. I do not propose to discuss the elements of such a program. I only wish to point out the need for it. I'm also, I'm also sure that I do not need to remind you that planning or developing a program will solve anything in itself. It is just the start, and as I stated in Philadelphia, and I quote, there should be a greater recognition that the program is still primarily at a research and development stage, and that this costs a great deal of money. It seems to me that if we really want to accelerate our program under present conditions, it will take considerably more private and government funds, risk-taking, and effort by everyone concerned. It particularly means the training of many more people in nuclear work. The efforts of GE in establishing this laboratory at San and San Jose facilities are certainly a step forward in private investment risk-taking and the training of nuclear engineers and scientists for the future. May I, on behalf of the Joint Committee, again congratulate you on the pioneer effort. I hope that I may have the pleasure of coming back here and visiting this laboratory and being with you again. Thank you very much. To conclude the exercises, a symbolic ceremony officially opens the General Electric Valacitos Atomic Laboratory. <laughs> Located on a 1,600-acre site near Pleasanton, California, and 26 miles northeast of San Jose, the new laboratory is the nation's largest privately financed atomic research facility. The laboratory has three major components. A radioactive materials laboratory. An experimental physics laboratory with 11,000 feet of floor space, just over half the size of the radioactive materials building. And a developmental boiling water power reactor. A fourth facility announced at the dedication is to be a materials testing reactor, another major facility the company requires to develop peacetime applications of atomic energy and to reduce costs of nuclear power. The radioactive materials laboratory will be used to study fuel, components and structural materials which have been exposed to nuclear radiation. Its facilities include heavily shielded test cells, as well as separate laboratories for metallurgy, chemistry, and physics. Guests are guided through the entire atomic laboratory beginning in the radioactive materials laboratory with some exhibits. 
the public information exhibit. A radioactive materials equipment display. A health physics exhibit. An early highlight of the tour is a demonstration of a master slave manipulator working behind the three foot thick concrete wall of one of the laboratory's four test cells. After a walk through an electronic maintenance shop, guests see a demonstration of equipment at a metallurgy laboratory. Following the tour of the radioactive materials laboratory, guests visit the experimental physics laboratory, which is equipped for making explorations and measurements to the degree of criticality, length of fuel life, distribution of temperatures and power, and control of various reactor core designs. The facility houses a heavily shielded critical assembly cell, a nuclear test reactor, a core assembly room, and space for other laboratory work. First stop inside the experimental physics laboratory is for a look at a model showing what the nuclear test reactor will look like when installed. The test reactor will be used for measurement of nuclear properties and for calibrations in the laboratory's broad program of peacetime atomic development. Other stops include a visit to a critical assembly control room and to a critical assembly cell. The intricate system controls the nuclear reaction sustained by the critical assembly, which will provide important engineering data. The critical assembly itself is a nuclear mock-up approximately one-tenth the size of the reactor core, which the company is building for the Commonwealth Edison Company's 180,000 kilowatt Dresden nuclear power station. The mock-up core will not produce power, but will sustain a chain reaction under essentially the same conditions as in the Dresden reactor. After inspecting a laboratory and a computer room, which complete the tour of the experimental physics laboratory, guests are driven to the site of the developmental boiling water power reactor. When construction is completed later this year, the developmental reactor will be used to test new reactor designs and features and will furnish steam for generation of this country's first privately financed atomic electric power. This steam will be supplied to a 5,000 kilowatt turbine generator installation owned and operated by the Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Electricity produced by the plant will be fed into the PG&E transmission system. The reactor is housed in a 100-foot high steel containment vessel surrounded by as much as six feet of reinforced concrete shielding. On display, a control rod drive mechanism. Reactor core supports in the pressure vessel. Last on the tour is a climb up through the PG&E turbine generator building and into the control room for a look at the array of controls which operators will use to run the reactor and the power. And then out again, out the last door. The last door of a tour of $10 million of privately financed facilities and equipment. Facilities and equipment to test ideas. Ideas of men in government and in industry. Men working to develop peacetime applications of atomic energy and to reduce costs of nuclear power. The Valacitos Atomic Laboratory. <laughs>